taken the drive up to North Couch in BC on Vancouver Island. We're at the future home of Goat Daddy Cannabis. Uh, these were one of our first uh, consulting clients and they've taken tremendous steps in getting this facility built and uh, we've helped them along the way with their licensing and we're looking forward to seeing this project come into fruition. We're here with Andrew Gordon from the BC Craft Farmers Co-op, a really progressive organization that's gonna hopefully help bridge some of the gaps, uh, some of the bottlenecks that craft cultivators are facing and kind of transition them into the new legal craft cannabis production world. Uh, maybe Andrew can give our give our listeners a little bit of background on kind of what the what the co-op's up to, and you know how are we, how are we going to kind of strive to help our, our uh, craft cultivators out there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, sites like this represent such important initiatives in our community, and the BC Craft Farmers Cooperative represents a group of stakeholders that are coming together to really support. Uh, a very vital industry uh, to the economy of British Columbia and particularly to this region in North Cowichan. Uh, you know, you look at the jobs, the tax revenue, the economic diversification that's possible in regions like this that are really hit uh, by COVID, by, you know, the erosion of a lot of traditional industries. Uh, you know, cannabis has been that bright light uh, for so many in the community and, and what we really want to do is, is you know, help achieve the aims and aspirations of legalization, help convert the illicit market in a way that's building business capacity for the region. And again, it goes back to jobs, it goes back to tax revenue, and it goes back to uh, improving, public, improving public health and safety. And so, you know, when you look at what a site like this represents, uh, you know, the infrastructure, the development that goes into it, the licensing, the work you guys do to work with the government to bring the stakeholders together to make this possible. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a tremendously encouraging thing. And to put a cooperative model around that that is transparent and accountable to the community itself um, is wonderful. And to bring on, you know, service providers, 420, uh, you know, bring together local developers and, and your MLAs and, and your community stakeholders and all of the people that help make this possible. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, this is going to be one of many in this region and across right. Canada. And so I'm really curious, like, you know, how did this all get started and, and you know, where is it going in this particular site? So in this particular site was, again, it was one of the first ones on the, it was one of the first uh, developments on the island that got approved by North Calton. And it was very early in the legalization that they hadn't even had, they didn't even have the actual zoning uh, permissions and everything. So these guys had to go through, you know, the seven circuits of hell just to get this this area approved, right? And then, you know, like it's, this isn't free to put these buildings no, up, right? You have to work with um, uh, developers, you have to work with financial partners, and, and then you have to, there's so many hula hoops. And you're doing that alone there. most of the time. Right. And, you know, these, these entrepreneurs, these private business entities, I mean, they are really blazing a trail and incurring a tremendous amount of cost, right. uh, time and money. And when, you know, you can bring a cooperative model to something like this, you know, show to the community ostensibly uh, and, you know, from an investment and financial standpoint that the federal, provincial and municipal governments are behind this project. They're doing it for the right reasons. This isn't just about making money for cannabis. This is about creating opportunity for people in community. Right. And so many of, so much of this is happening already in, in our communities. People are growing. Cannabis is a billion dollar, billions of dollar industry in this, in this region alone. Correct. Um, so we need to be very mindful of that. And, you know, the opportunity to transition is here with legalization. You know, prohibition has ended. Yeah. And so let's turn this into a vital and really flourishing economy. Right. And sites like this, you know, they represent, this is a beacon to a lot of other industries that are suffering right now. This yeah. is new revenue in the community. This is new jobs. And this is a tax uh, opportunity for uh, local communities to help build up, you know, things that have been eroding over time. Municipal services, hospitals, schools, like yeah. that revenue drives innovation in the community to help build even better projects moving right. forward. So, right. you know, again, bringing a cooperative model to the table, really showing the community that, hey, like the entire weight of the federal and provincial governments are behind these projects, the opportunity for financing, business development support, you know that you're not doing it alone. Yeah, and that's where a lot of these trailblazers have been doing it alone. Yeah. So for every project like this, there's uh, hundreds of these types of projects that are just not getting anywhere because of uh, either 
uh, zoning issues or, or, or putting financing. together the financing or putting yeah. together the right groups. I mean, uh, an operation like this, there's no reason you're not generating a 25 to 30 percent profit margin. So it's time for people to kind of get into some investing in some of these smaller operations and, uh, and, and moving forward. We're really excited to be involved in all these things and working with people like the BC Craft Farmers Co-op is something that we're super excited in. So, What's that's, next here? What's that's, going on? What's next here is is uh, we're going to start getting some walls up in here and then, <laughs> and uh, and start getting like they're they're well along on their licensing process and and it's just going to be now a matter of because of changes to Health Canada's rules and regulations and that you have to be fully built out before you can submit an application unless you're in the navigator program uh, we're going to get this thing built out we're going to get the application submitted and hopefully you know six months six nine months down the road uh, this place is uh, cultivating this is four micros here and hopefully they're cultivating you know 2400 kilograms a year of, uh, of premium BC craft cannabis yeah and that's such an important differentiator right now on the retail side Consumers are not happy with what they're seeing in the regulated environment. That's why so many consumers have not navigated away from illicit sources. And you know, it'll be craft micro producers with amazing genetics, a real narrative and story around why and how they got involved in the industry. And then it's all those finer touches after uh, it's been harvested that really make the difference on the craft side. Exactly. Um, and you're doing it organic and regenerative the whole way through. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's lots of different models, obviously, you can pull from in terms of the production, but a lot of these guys and a lot of these individuals, sorry, want to focus on getting closer to the land, really, you know, expressing the full genetic profile of the plant. It's not about a rush to market. Right. They really take their time with, you know, the flowering stage, with the cure, with the, with the with the dry time. And and then, you know, again, being creative at the other end with the packaging solution. Right. Maybe there's, you know, people in this community that can help add value to that. And of course and there is. Like this would be yeah, a of course there is. That'll yeah. draw those service providers and those creative individuals to build solutions for the industry. Exactly. And so, you know, again, with a cooperative model, the community knows that they're in it together. Right. And that's a differentiator for, for what has traditionally been, you know, very kind of polarizing uh, development projects in the community. Yeah. And I think if we work together, we can see more of these projects uh, come to fruition around the province and also across Canada as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, uh, smash the bell in the corner for notifications, and uh, we'll see you next Friday.